well that's not the same thing because i could i could still buy pretty much whatever movie i want i could i could go to walmart i could go to um i could go to amazon i could go to whatever service i um that i, that I want to and i could i could buy rambo if i want to i could buy the first terminator one that's still available if i want to i could buy whatever video game i mean i could buy whatever movie i want pretty much you can't do that with games you can't do it if you if they're offering you the games on their service and you decide not to pay for their service then you don't have the right to play those games until you pay them to use their service I, you, I don't do, you, do you understand what i'm saying yeah i, I understand what you're saying having that. what i am saying is that you don't have the option to buy any of the classic games that they're offering you in the service and they know and i mean there, there is but but let, let's let's say if you don't have any option they know that that's why they want you to pay for the subscription and that's the problem that i have that's the problem I mean, that's, I the, that's the pro that's the problem that's the problem that i have if you're going to if if you're going to make a claim that oh yeah you for, for example if, if 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 these companies are going to make a claim that we want Oh yeah, you, we hear you, uh, um, fans, that you you care about game preservation. But yeah, if you don't even give us the option, you know, to, to buy the game and to keep the game, well then, all you all you all you really that's all you really doing is just uh, um, nickel and diming your audience. That's all you're doing. Uh, I, I disagree, but that, that's not even the main point of the of, of the, the thing that I wanted to talk. Scroll down the article. All right, just tell me when to stop. All right. Cause I, I read a lot. I read a whole lot. So, stop right there. Now you don't even have to read. You don't even have to read the article. But this quote right here: "Gamers are used to owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen." Now, what he's referring to here is he's talking about the idea, and I think this is the quote where he can, where he said that gamers are going to have to get used to not owning their game right now i don't know if he meant it that way i think he's talking in general but i could be wrong I, I like I, said, I haven't read the article but if he's saying what i think he's saying here i think what he's saying is that until gamers are comfortable not owning their 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 game now then he's talking in in reference to the music industry and the movie industry because in the movie industry if you if you go on netflix right you get a whole bunch of movies you don't own those movies you have access to watch those movies you're paying a service to watch those movies but you don't own them when it comes to the music industry apple soundcloud you have the option to to um to listen to those to those songs but you don't but you don't have access to them they're, they're not yours if you stop paying them then you stop having access to those games to those to those um to those music to that music in gaming we we don't we don't op gamers don't operate that way right now the wide variety of us don't operate that way but the reason why Ubisoft Plus exists. The reason why Game Pass exists. The reason why um, the Nintendo Online subscription exists. The reason why PlayStation now, whatever fuck they call it now, is because they it's want because to, they want that model. They want to go in that. Well, not, not, well, I think Microsoft. My, I think I don't know if every company wants this model, but I know for a fact Microsoft does, and we'll talk about that in the next topic. They want, at least Microsoft, they want Game Pass to be number one, right? I don't know about Ubisoft, um, like, I, I don't know about Ubisoft, but they want, they, they've hitched their wagon to the Game Pass, right? And that model is the model that Netflix has, it's the model that Apple Music has, same, going, so on and so forth right and he's he's explaining here that the only way that gamers or the only way that 
you know, Netflix for gaming is going to work is if gamers are comfortable not owning their games. Now we all we all are old. We 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 I I prefer to own my game. I prefer to own my game. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you have a lot of young people in the in, that are that are growing up and, and gaming that don't that don't seem to care. Mm, I disagree with that. Uh, like, I, I, they, they, they would be they would they would be more comfortable than we would realistically because they don't they don't they don't grow up in a future where physical media is is dominant yeah but but you you still, you still see you know kids you know telling your mom and telling their parents i i want to buy you know this game whether if it's buying it digitally or they want to go to the store and pick it up themselves going to the game shop or whatever you that still happens now even with kids but the digital age, but in the digital age, we're going further, and further away from ownership. Like you can't convince me that buying a game digitally is the same as buying a game physically. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. I I I feel like I have more ownership of physical media because it's, it's right there. It, it, I own it. That disc is mine. That key is mine. Correct. I I, I agree. I agree. And kids nowadays are more used to digital, to digital, to digital media, whether it's movies, whether it's music, and whether it's video games. So, the thing is that as you, I don't know, if, I don't know, if, I don't know if it says it here, but well, it here, is. Well, here it, it says um, this, this is the one that you had mentioned earlier that the consumer should yeah. need to, yeah, like see he said that's the consumer shit that needs to happen they got comfortable not owning their cds read, oh, read, read it from the beginning read it from the beginning all right um i don't have to i don't have a crystal ball but when you look at the different subscription services that are out there we've had a rapid expansion over the past couple of years but it's still relatively small compared to other models he begins we're seeing expansion on consoles at, as the like of PlayStation and Xbox bring new people in. On PC, from a Ubisoft standpoint, it's already been great, but we're looking to reach out more on PC so we see opportunities there. One of the things we saw is that gamers are used to a little bit like DVD having and owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. They got comfortable not owning their CD collection or DVD collection. That's a transformation that's been a bit slow to happen in games. As gamers grow comfortable in that aspect, you don't lose your progress. If you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. That's not, that's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So. It's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. You want me to keep going? No, no, no. Okay. That, that was pretty, that was pretty much what he said. Now he didn't outright say gamers should be more comfortable owning their game. He, he didn't say that outright. He's just explaining the differences between the movie industry and the music industry, and how that change has been a lot slower for gaming. But it, it still it still feels like he's implying that's what he also wants to happen. I mean, I don't know whether he wants it to happen or not, but at the end of the day, like he's not wrong here. But 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 when you when you offering a service like that, clear that that's an indication to me that you want it to happen. Yeah, he he's pretty much saying that. Oh, let let's start early. I mean, he didn't say that. You could just see it, you know, with the subscription. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and oh, to oh. me, the subscription is there pretty much to sell sell you their old library to make money off of their old library that's what they're that's what that's there for mm -hmm. and you know like it, it, i mean it is what it is what it is. i think that the, the best part the best thing about subscription services is is about the is about the light is about the existing library now you said something that i don't care about game preservation that's not entirely true i think we've we've had arguments over this Okay. I I I believe in game preservation, but I don't think a console manufacturer should be hell bent on doing that. 
especially if they're making new stuff. Nintendo should be more focused on the next Switch. They shouldn't be worried about what old game they could bring they could bring to you. I would rather than focus on new games. But what I don't want Nintendo doing is trying to kill off the emulation emulation, which is what they actively tried to do. Because if you're not, if you're, if you, because what they, what Nintendo, want, what all the, I, all the company wants is, but I'm just pointing out Nintendo. They want to make money off of their old game. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. But they also want you to buy their new console. They also want you to buy their new game. But if you if you not if you're not making money off of Nintendo games or Super Nintendo games or whatever, why 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 are you trying to kill off these emulation companies? That's the type of I'm. That is the the part of game preservation that I'm in favor of. Is emulation because it, to me it's the it's the best it's the best it's not the best way but it's it's a way to experience these games as they were without you know without the current company having to focus on reselling you those games you know what i'm saying like they they can they can do they can do their thing and if you want to experience a game back in the old school days you download the emulator you download the rom you get to experience those games so who wants to be the first one to bust out their hooked hand Peg leg and eye patch. I mean, I mean, as far as far as far as I'm concerned, as far as, as far as Nintendo's concerned, if you if you do emulation, you're doing that already. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But like, what he's saying here is not is not wrong. He, he's not wrong. Now, do I think gaming will ever get to that point? I don't. I don't think so. And if it does, that's not. I don't think that's a good thing. Because gaming is a is a hobby that is, is just different than the other two. The way it's consumed, the way it's judged, it's just different. Well, it's, I mean, we were literally just talking about how it, it's consumed in different manners. And we were just talking yeah. about Evo and CEO and fighting games and how you have literally these conventions put together just for that for people to hop on and play and it's not just that they're playing whole different types of games they're playing one type of game yeah so and you can and and music music and yeah music and and movies you can't it it, the the experience is just not there it's not the same it can't be because for for every blockbuster film that is released for every number one album that is released there's gonna be a game that outsells it, that's going to provide an experience that neither one of those can do, even if you were to combine them. The games provide an experience that cannot be replicated in any other form of media. It can't be done. Because the moment you try to replicate it, you become it. Simple as that. So, I mean, I mean, but you, you have anything? I mean, you you said you said that um that he's not, you know, that he's not wrong, and you know, look, I, I, I mean, I I guess I understand what you're saying, but I I I I just don't think that, in my opinion, you know, you could think what you know, you could think what you want. How you mentioned, well, you don't want you don't want them to you know get rid of the um, you don't want them to get rid of the um. The, you know the emulation which i agree with you and then you also said you don't want nintendo and all, all these other you know console manufacturers to focus on you know own games like old games and whatnot but everything that they tried to offer us you know has been crap if if that that place that, that, play, that PlayStation that PlayStation class that you bought oh, okay. you said it was garbage yeah it was they, garbage. It, you, it, it, they, they only offered you you had to buy another device they offered you what 20 games and you went out of your way to, to buy all these different you know um 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 sd sd sticks and none of them wasn't working i think except like one or two of them you had to go through all that hassle and 
overall, it wasn't really a good experience unless you were pirating the game. So, 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 giving us these classic, you know, consoles, but yeah, if, if the games aren't, you know, are, are still not there, what's the point? That's not, that's not, to me, they're, they're just doing it wrong. What, what PlayStation should have done is giving you, is give you all the classic PS1 games, whatever that they have, and put it on that console. That's a true PlayStation classic. That's a true, you know, um, true nostalgia or a, a true experience of all the old games you have played in the past. But they offer you. Go ahead. I, I, I would agree on that, except for one thing, and that would be uh, memory limitation. So the average PlayStation One game as an actual computer file, single file, on a computer is roughly about 450 megabytes, which is about a, as much as a single CD can hold in terms of just storage space. How many games came out on the PlayStation 1 in total? We're talking about thousands of games, right? Yeah. Okay, so once you start getting into those kinds of numbers, the amount of storage required to store every single PlayStation game that's ever been made onto a single console, you're looking at a very large hard drive. In fact, give me a moment. And you also so we can talk about fans. they don't own all those games. They don't own the licenses to all those games. So, but, uh, it still it still doesn't change the fact that that plastic that you bought you should have been garbage. It still doesn't change that. It was garbage. It, it, was, it was garbage. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's garbage. What is that? What is that supposed to mean? That, that actually proves my point. It, it was. I would. They, they wasted. They wasted R and D money. They wasted money that they could have put into something else. And I get it. They're not. They're not in the same department. Like, they wasted money doing something else. They, they could have done something completely different, something better, than waste their time recreating the PlayStation One Classic, which they did a shitty job of. They could have done. They could have used that. They could have used that money to do something better. So yeah. So it was a waste of time. Is what you're saying. It was a waste. Completely. It was a waste of time. All right. Um. Any, you have any? You have anything else to say, Steve? Before we move on? No. 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 We, we, we could, we, I think we've been out here, you know, long enough. Um. You know. Look. It, it is what it is. If we're gonna have to accept subscription services opposed to you know just having owning the game upright like how she Frank said how how he said even he wish it could happen that way i wish it could happen that way it's not going to happen the only way that it's probably going to happen is either you subscribe to it and pay for life or piracy that's all we have 